Hello everyone. Today we are going to discuss the osteology of the pelvis and we are going to look at the bones that comprise the pelvis, their primary landmarks and why it is important to learn about them. So let's start with the bones of the pelvis. The bony pelvis consists of four primary bones, the two hip bones, the sacrum and the coccyx. The hip bones articulate anteriorly at the pubic symphysis and posteriorly with the sacrum at the sacroiliac joint. So let's start our discussion with the hip bone. Each hip bone is a large irregularly shaped bone formed by the fusion of three bones, the ilium, the ischium and the pubis. Now, Let's look at some important landmarks associated with these fused bones. The first landmark is the sacroiliac joint. The sacroiliac joint is the articulation between the sacrum and the ilium. It is a synovial plane joint with very limited movement. However, it is held together by strong ligaments. The second landmark is the acetabellum. The acetabellum is a deep concave structure that serves as the socket for the head of the femur. It forms the ball and socket hip joint. The name acetabulum comes from Latin meaning vinegar cup. Actually, in newborns, the acetabellum is formed by the ilium, ischium and the pubis, which are then separated by the triradiant cartilage. Now, since cartilage does not appear on x-rays, it may look like a fracture in young children when it is just a normal finding. Now, this is a very important point for radiology students. The third landmark is the obturator foramen. The obturator foramen is a large opening in the pelvis. The word obturator comes from Latin meaning to block or to stop. And this is because the foramen is mostly covered by the obturator membrane, leaving just a small space called the obturator canal for the obturator nerve and arteries and also veins to pass through. The fourth landmark is the greater sciatic notch. The greater sciatic notch allows for the sciatic nerve to pass from the pelvis cavity to the posterior thigh. The Periformis muscle also passes through this notch. The fifth landmark is the pelvic inlet and the pelvic outlet. The pelvic inlet is the upper border of the pelvis, where structures like the digestive, urogenital, vascular and the nervous system pass between the abdominal and the pelvic cavity. It is formed by the sacrum and the acute line and also the pubic symphysis. Then the pelvic outlet is the lower boundary, marked by the pubic symphysis, the ischial tuberosity, the cosigeal and the ischiopubic ramus. It forms the passage between the perineum and the pelvic cavity. Now let's talk about the landmarks found on the ilium. The ilium is the uppermost and the largest portion of the oscosa and the key landmarks include number one the iliac crest it is a prominent ridge on the superior aspects of the ilium it serves as a point of attachment for multiple muscles the second landmark on the ilium is the iliac fossa the iliac fossa is a large shallow depression on the medial surface of the ilium the iliacus muscle originates from here and it inserts at the lesser truncanta of the femur. The third landmark is the anterior and the posterior iliac spine. There are actually four spines found in the ilium. The first one is the anterior superior iliac spine. The second, the anterior inferior iliac spine. The third, the posterior superior iliac spine. And the fourth, the posterior inferior iliac spine. The fourth landmark found on the ilium is the gluteal lines. There are actually three gluteal lines that serves as points of attachment for gluteal muscles. The first one, 
the posterior gluteal line, it serves as a part, it serves as attachment for the gluteal maximus. Number two, the anterior gluteal line, it serves as point of attachment for the gluteal medius, and then the inferior gluteal line serves as point of attachment for the gluteal maximus. Now, let's talk about the landmarks found on the ischium. The ischium forms the lower posterior part of the pelvis. And key landmarks include, number one, the ischial spine. It is a sharp bony projection located between the greater and the lesser sciatic notches. Number two, the ischial tuberosity. It is a rough swollen area that serves as point of attachment for the hamstring muscles, which are the bicep femoris, the semitendineous, and the semimembranous muscles. It is also known as the sit bone because it supports the body weight when we are sitting. The third landmark is the ischial ramus. The ischial ramus is a branch of bone that extends towards the pubis. It forms part of the ischiopubic ramus. Now, let's move over to the landmarks found on the pubis. The pubis forms the anterior portion of the pelvis, and key landmarks found include the number one, the superior pubic ramus, which is the, hori which is the horizontal branch of the pubis. It contains the pectineal line site, an attachment site for muscles. Number two, the inferior pubic ramus. It is a lower branch that connects to the ischial ramus. It serves as a point of attachment for the medial thigh for the medial thigh muscles. Together with the ischial ramus, it forms the ischiopubic ramus, also known as the conjoint ramus. Number three, which is the third landmark found on the pubis, we have the pubic tubercle. The pubic tubercle is a small bump on the superior pubic ramus. It serves as an attachment site for the inguinal ligament which extends to the ASIS. The fourth landmark is the pubic symphysis. The pubic symphysis is an important landmark for radiography students as it serves to help locate the centering point when taking hip x-rays. It is a fibrocartilaginous joint connected by two pubic bones. It provides flexibility during childbirth. So in conclusion, by understanding these bones and their landmarks, we can appreciate their roles in movement, stability, and structural support. And this knowledge is actually important for medical students and also those in physiotherapy, those in radiography, and those in nursing. If you found this video helpful, please don't forget to like and subscribe. And you can read other books or test books and watch other videos on the hip osteology for better understanding. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.